what is up epg fam further here and welcome back to another aether gazer video now presumably hella is going to be the next up drop rate after living solo cyrus in patch 1.1 now i say presumably because this is the global version it could be different than the cn and we could have a different timeline on when these characters release but if we are going off of what we've been experiencing so far which is the same timeline as cn Hella should be next, and I wanted to go ahead and talk about her, go over her kit, and go over some tier lists on what the CN thinks about her, and get your guys' thoughts and opinions as well down in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Also, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and drop a like. Sub if you're new. I would love to have you stick around. Join the FPG fam as we've been pumping out tons of Aether Gazer content. So if that's right up your alley, go ahead and consider subscribing. I would love to have you join in on the conversations that we have on a daily basis, sometimes twice a day regardless let's go ahead and jump straight into it so this is hella now from a character design standpoint i think she looks great she has a coffin that turns into guns and she shoots lasers and she floats around right that's up a lot of people's alleys including my own so i think from a character design standpoint hella looks fantastic but what is she bringing to the table what is she offering your account well let's take a look at it so she's from the you're just you're just Ill. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce it. I do apologize. I know I'm going to get roasted about that, but she's from that faction and she is of the shadow element, if I'm not mistaken. Now we take a look at her skills, the normal attack, unfold the magic gun and shoot continuously at locked target, causing a total of those percentages that you see there, dark attribute damage of attack power. I believe on the global side, they call it shadow. I could be mistaken, but I believe that's what they call it. We take a look at the skill one, unfold the magic gun and shoot at the enemies. Now, on the global side, I'm not sure if they're going to call it magic gun. They may stick with that name. They may call it something different. I'm not entirely too sure. But for right now, we'll go ahead and call it the magic gun. This is a wonky translation probably from the wiki. I'm going to leave this down in the description below so you guys can check it out for yourself as well. Massive shout out to them. I'll have that for you guys in the description. Anyways, magic gun and shoot at the enemies within front range, causing a total of those percentages. Dark attribute damage of attack power. Once again, shadow element. Skill 2, dull transforms into a magic cannon form, firing a cannonball in locked uh, direction, causing a total of that percentage. Dark attribute damage of attack power. And then she is of the divine grace uh you know attribute of, of where you have the traces rage she's divine grace gain 15 points of divine power after hitting it can only be obtained once per cast and then we have skill three slowly transforms into a bastion form which i think looks incredible i think that's going to be fun to do which can continue to bombard the aiming direction each bombardment consumes 20 points of the divine power causing a total of those percentages of dark attribute damage of attack power and then in the fortress form the damage received by self is reduced by 20 percent so she has some damage reduction and it is immune to control effects so i assume that means like freeze and stuff that would cc you but cannot move or cast other skills except the linking secret so you can't move when you're in that form you can only rotate left and right Every time it receives damage of 1% of the maximum health, consumes one divine power point. When the divine power is insufficient or click to cancel the fortress form will be canceled by itself. So it looks like you can cancel out of that form. You don't have to use the full duration. And it appears that it will run out quicker the more damage that you're taking. So you have to keep that in mind. This might be a character when you go into that bastion form. You might want to be off in the distance at range where the enemies aren't focused on you. Maybe they're focused on your allies if you're running her on point. So that way you can... Do this without getting hit and maybe have it last longer do more damage right and then we have the profound meaning simultaneously summon multiple magic cannons this is the ult and you can see the cooldowns here five second cooldown that's pretty generous 15 seconds 15 seconds um so you can see the cooldowns there 20 second cooldown on the ultimate um, you simultaneously summon multiple magic cannons to shoot in the locked direction and scatter bombardment to the enemies in the area four times each time causing those percentages I'm going to say those multipliers are, are looking pretty beefy. The dark attribute damage of the attack power and the dark attribute damage of the whole team is increased by 30% lasting for 10 seconds. So this might be a situation where you may want to pair up with other shadow element uh, characters because you get that buff right there. That's, that's a pretty beefy buff as well. And then when the dodge effect is triggered by oneself or teammates gain 15% of the esoteric value an effect can be triggered at most once uh, every half second. Interesting. And then the dodge skill um looks part of the course uh, of all enemies in the field for two seconds and gain 30 points of the divine power so you can gain some divine power that way and then there's the weapon uh the signature functor i did want to go ahead and take a look at this 
Um, so they call it the holy tree for that pantheon. Uh, okay, it's pantheon. That's what it's called. Okay, I'm starting to learn the 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 actual names and and the correctness. Excuse me, the correctness. Uh, when equipped with Dark Star Hella, reduce the consumption of Divine Energy of the Cannonball in the Fortress State by 5 points and increase the basic damage of the Cannonball 32%, minimum, maximum 80%. So this is really good. I, I don't know if it's going to be necessary, but it does appear as if it's going to be extremely beneficial uh, because you're reducing the consumption of that Divine Energy, meaning that you could be in that Bastion State for longer and you're increasing the damage as well, so you're going to be able to do more damage. Cannonball, is that the ult or is that the second skill? That's the second skill, if I'm not mistaken. Firing a cannonball in the locked direction. Okay. So, essentially, you're boosting the damage of skill 2, if I'm reading this correctly. Once again, this is wonky translation, so it could be different. And then you're increasing your duration of your skill 3. So there's benefits to, to both skills, if I'm understanding that correctly, once again. And then we have the recommended sigils, I assume. So the one thing that I did notice when I was looking at this beforehand is that I don't believe we have this sigil on the global side. So I assume that they are going to introduce more sigils um, as we progress through the patches and, and through the game on the global side. They'll introduce these sigils because this one I was looking all over for it. I couldn't find it. If it's in the game, you can let me know in the comments down below on the global side, but I couldn't find it. And once again, that led me to believe they're going to introduce these sigils, at least some of them, uh, new ones as we progress through the game. But this is going to be extremely good. I can see why it's recommended. But we do have the Philosopher, and that's the Divine Modifier Skill Damage Increase by 10%. Gain one Divine Power per second. This is going to be extremely good for her as well. Um, you, that's something you're definitely going to want to maybe pre-farm if you're looking to get Hella. By the way, let me know in the comments down below if you're going to be going for Hella or if you plan on skipping. Um, I, I know a lot of people may be skipping. So let me go ahead and now transition to what I think about Hella and then talk about skipping and pulling. So my thoughts overall on Hella is that I think she's going to be able to do some pretty good damage from these multipliers that I'm seeing once again. This could change on the global side. I am hoping that it remains the same. I haven't heard of many changes that have been happening, so I assume everything's going to remain the same for the most part. So these, the, the multipliers and the damage, it, it looks to be pretty nutty. For what I've been seeing and what I've been learning about this character from the CN side is that she's actually top tier, uh, and she is one of those meta units that is a great AoE damage dealer, one that you would want to have on your account. The thing about it is that after Hela's patch, literally right afterwards, if we take a look here, was Hera. Once again, if we're following the CN timeline, that's going to be tough for a lot of free-to-play players and light spenders because Hera is what they would consider a must-pull because she busts the team, best support in the game. So I would understand why people would skip Hela for Hera, saving their premium currency, especially if they're free-to-play or light spenders. So... That is the conundrum when it comes to Hella, but help benefit your account and be a good investment because if we take a look at the tier list, you can see that she is in the 0.5 or 0.5 tier list. I wonder why Aether Gazer tier lists are like this, tier 0, tier, tier 0 0.5 and not like, you know, Z, S, S plus. I, I don't know. I, I've noticed that Aether Gazer tier list, they go tier 0 0.5 one anyways i digress so she's in the upper echelon so let's put it that way uh of tier list even if we take a look here which is uh, i'll leave this in the description down below as well um, you could see that they have it tier 0 tier 1 they have hades and tier 0 hera and tier 0 uh, they have thor in 0 0.5 they have uh, tier in 0 0.5 oceanus anubis they have sukuyomi and then here you have hella so this really is confirmation that Hella is going to be a fantastic unit. I'm going to be pulling for her personally, but once again, I'm a content creator. I want to make content for you about this character, give you my thoughts, my first impressions, give you, you know, builds for her and just bring out content for you in regards to it. So I'm going to be pulling for her, but if we're following the same timeline as CN, it's going to be, once again, maybe one that you skip because of Hera being right afterwards. But we'll, we'll have to see if that's the case. Who knows? They may flip-flop it and have Hera and then Hela. I, you know, I'm not too sure, especially with patches and, and how they do things. But overall, I think she's going to be a phenomenal character. The other thing that I did want to quickly mention as well is that one downside or con probably to this character is that she's not that fun to play. 
I've heard a lot of people say that Hela is boring. She's not a good character to use or the gameplay is not all that um, immersive and, and fun. So that's understandable, right? Because first and foremost, you have to enjoy the character you're using and you want the character to be fun and fit your gameplay style. And, and Hela is not going to be for everybody. I That's totally understandable. I mean, for some people, Living Solo Cyrus wasn't for everybody. And I find her to be incredibly fun. So it's all subjective to every individual. So you have to keep that in mind. Furthermore, you, you have to think of, you know, if she doesn't fit your gameplay style, are you okay with putting this character that you use premium currency on to be an ally for the AI to control, which may be a prominent thing for a lot of people. Um, and that's something that I'll definitely try is have her as an AI because I think she might do really well in the AI slot because she's range, she's AOE, she does tons of damage. So you can have her off to the side going berserk and then you have your main dps that you're controlling going crazy whether it be sukuyomi osiris or whoever you built up to be your main dps and that could be a very potent combination or you can run her point be at range in that comfortable space and be able to just rain down a lot of damage from afar and be that main dps um at, at a range unit much like an arctic poseidon right so those are just all things to consider and things to think about. But let me know once again in the comments down below. And I'll see you all in the next one. Remember to stand out, be different, have fun, go further beyond in everything that you do. My name is Cody. You call me further. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, guys.